Okay, so now for the class boundaries. Because our consecutive bars have to touch, and we actually had 17 as a score and 28 as a score, then the bars themselves can't be the numbers 17 and 28. So when we make our class boundaries, we just go down by a half and up by a half. So this is going to be, I promise it'll make sense. Okay. This will be 16.5 and 28.5. And so, if this is the, like the bars of the bin, which means the bar is shared between these two. So this is 28.5 and 40.5. Which, when we get to second semester and we, we do data that has decimals, then we'll just add a decimal place and our boundaries will have a different decimal place. But not doing that right now. Just integers in here. So you get a hundred point five? Yep. For the bar. Because you can't put data inside of the bar, right? So if I have a hundred, so if these are my bars, eighty-eight point five and a hundred and a hundred point five, then the hundred goes inside the bar. Nothing, there's enough. So. And I don't I don't know why it, it really doesn't fall into this semester, but we do talk about it next semester. All of your class widths have to be the same, with the exception of the lowest class and the, the highest class, because you can always have and up when you're talking about like ages or something. We could have we could be doing ages and we could say our last category would be age 60 and up. Yeah, so, and the same thing for lower class. So when you do a frequency distribution, all of the ones in the middle have to be the same. But you can have open-ended lowest class and upper class if you need to. And for grades, you, the only reason you would need that is if it happened to have extra points on it. So you could have a 89 and above category if you needed to. Which we do, we'll do one in the next semester, but this semester it will keep it simple. Integers, things that are familiar. All right, so we're going to do our next um, frequency distribution histogram, this time with class boundaries. And also, instead of labeling with just regular frequency, let's do relative frequency, which remember is the decimal slash percent category of our little chart. So with that in mind, so we can't just number by ones. Um, and let me see what we got here. One, two, three, four. Our highest frequency was what? Point two six. So let's let we can um, I think label by I need more I need more cushions. Um, we can label by point zero two. So, yeah. So again, I'm not going to label them all because it gets really squinchy. So I'm going to skip. But the first line is point zero two. So. I'm going by twos. Two, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, oh, fourteen. Okay. I just I skipped it because I just want, didn't want it to be crowded.
All right, and this time I'm going to, I probably should have on the other one This hurts my brain. I keep labeling it wrong. Oh, well, and I, probably what I should have done is yeah, label label the second one and start at point four, point zero four. That's probably what I should have done. That made it, might have made it not quite as confusing. All right, this time because we are we are labeling our class boundaries, I'm going to put this little line there. I don't know if you remember what that means, but that's a break in the graph. Because I'm going to start at 16.5. So my first bar is is my lowest class boundary. Oh my god, why do I keep doing my home? Wait, hold on. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, <that hurts>. <laughs> <laughs> where? <laughs> okay. Where? Where are you? Where are you? <laughs> oh, you don't know anymore. So I have point two. Skip a line. Point zero six. Point zero six. Skip a line. Skip a line. Point ten. That's right. Skip a line. Skip a line. And then point fourteen. Right. Skip a line. Skip a line. Point eighteen. Right. Skip a line. Uh huh. Point twenty. Oh wait, wait. <laughs> All right. We found it. Point two, point four. Absolutely, That's why. Why is this happening? I'm sorry, Jackson. So my first. Category, my first class has class boundaries of 16.5 to 28.5, which is why I put the little break there so that it's not like I actually I didn't start at zero. I took out that piece of the graph and started at 16.5, and it had a relative frequency of 0.13. Wait a minute, wait. So the next class boundary is 40.5. Oh, what? Where are you, Julia? Okay. I don't know what I keep doing. Okay, so we have 28, so 16, skip a line, 28, skip a line, 40, yeah? And why do I... Okay. Never mind, good. Okay. Sorry. You're good.
So they really, they end up looking the same, same shape, same everything. When you're doing a study or it's your turn to decide how you're going to display your data, you decide how you want to display it not based on what's easiest. I mean, I know it's easier to label the midpoints because they're just one number and they're right in the middle. But you base it on what it